Hey guys, it's Merrick, and welcome back to my Let's Play series here. I'm going to try to keep up with sort of this weekly update that I've been going for, at least. So this should be up on Tuesday, uh, if everything goes right. But um, I decided that, you know, that's kind of what I want to do once a week, to kind of see if I can keep up with that, if I have the, the time and, and patience and ability to keep up with that. Uh, for now, uh, I did a few things uh, while between the last video. Got a couple of supplies, nothing major, just a few things here and there. And I found a good cave that I want to go explore with you guys, so that should be fun. And I wanted to spend some time sort of figuring out where I really want to go in this cave of Minecraft. It was getting late at night. Uh, I figured out that I kind of wanted to deal with uh, industrial craft first, which you'll see a lot of basically machinery and stuff that allow me to expand my resources that I, that I gather. It's just going to make my life easier that way. And then I'll go into something like Thaumcraft, which is sort of like this magical element that's a lot of fun to explore. And with the abundant resources I'm going to have with Industrial Craft, it should be uh, easy to do. Maybe even do some bees, because there's a lot of beehives around here. Other than that, um, I wanted to spend this video to talk about my name. My, my nickname, uh, specifically. Uh, you can tell by the title of this Let's Play and the, and a lot of the uh, you know stuff that you'll see my name around. Uh, I go by the name Merrick. It's a nickname that I've had, and I kind of wanted to explain the origin of that because there's you know people kind of will want to know where that's from, especially the people that I know personally who don't know where it's from, and wonder why I have such a weird little name. It starts back in high school, uh, specifically during my senior year. And I was in an econ class with a couple of my friends. The idea is that uh, we were working on a, a project that basically we had to build a uh, we had to build a like a uh, like a board game or something like that, something to that extent. That had to do with probably some uh, economic theory of some sort. I can't remember exactly what it was, but basically we had you know. Colors and construction paper and basically had to build a little game board and it was just simple fun stuff like that And we ended up uh, Cutting out a square piece of construction paper for our for our game board That came out to a perfect square without us having to measure it or anything And we were like super stoked about that for whatever reason that was entertaining to us So where is this cave that I had found? Oh, that's my house. It's over here then and we figured that we had these weird godly skills of, you know, apparently measuring, <laughs> eyeballing it essentially. And we kind of stuck with that idea that we had godly powers. And in a later class with one of the original friends from the econ class and another one of our friends who was equally as creative, we all kind of got together and started thinking about what it would be like if we were actually gods. And so I'm getting a lag spike like out of nowhere. Here we go. And we felt that we could write our own little pantheon of gods and have a lot of fun doing so. And we did. And so that's kind of, this is sort of the basic origin of my name, is that when we decided to make these gods in our pantheon, I chose a name for my god, for, you know, the god representation of me. And, you know, from a list of names that I, you know, helped look through and stuff like that, the name Merrick popped up, which I believe has sort of like a Polish origin to it. Uh, and I really liked it, and so it stuck, and I've used it ever since. And uh, sort of just with a lot of the things I do, whether it be my gamer tag or whatever. And so that's why you see my name is Merrick a lot of the time. My actual name is Pedro, and I, I'm perfectly fine with that. It's one of my favorite names. It's my dad's name, it's my grandfather's name. I, you know, I love that name, but for now, for gaming and, and just for fun, it's been a great nickname for me. I've, I've enjoyed having it and enjoyed using it. That, you know, aside, I figured I could use this point now to kind of tell you the story of our Pantheon. I recently sort of refreshed myself on it since we had written it from uh, at high school. Ooh. Oh, cool. These, this kind of thing is used for magical thomcraft. We'll get into that probably later down the road. It's good that I find those things, though. More light. 
Uh, but the story kind of goes as this. In the beginning, there was, you know, a lifeless ball of earth that was just dirt and devoid of life. And the first sort of living being was a giant tree planted by the cosmos, if you will, by a father cosmos kind of figure. Time, cosmos, the universe, sort of everything in between. That's what planted this tree. And this tree was the mother of life on the earth. Specifically, the life of the gods who would eventually come to build, uh, you know, the world as we knew it, know it knowingly or not. What had happened is the tree had grown large and had born three apples. And the first apple was, you know, a big bright red one and had fallen to the earth and from it popped out the first god. Uh, a small young boy at this point named Merrick. He was a, a curious, uh, athletic, fun-loving, mischievous kind of kid who loved scraping his knees and getting dirty, and that's just sort of what he loved to do. Uh, after him, uh, as he was just sort of exploring the earth around him, the next apple falls from the tree, and this time a, a young girl sort of pops up from the tree, and she's a, a, a young just young girl by the same age as you know her brother Merrick and her name is Zephyr and she's got wispy blonde hair and she's really rambunctious and energetic and likes to run around and has the inexplicable ability to fly <laughs> and just floats around and has a lot of fun and she gets along well enough with her brother they have their bickering fights but she's the oldest one next to him and after those two were born, the last little god was born, and from the from a, a bright green underripe apple, <laughs> and her name was Bidio, and she was the Earth Child essentially. She was in love with all things that could grow and live, and she was born with dirt and twigs in her hair, and really attached herself to the tree of life. And sort of became the the the, the life loving natural god of the three of them, and the youngest. And I need a new pickaxe. pickaxe. And so for a while, it was those three gods on this barren planet with this giant tree, and their interactions, their their grouping together and so, sort of the things that they would do together basically help build the world as we, as, as we see it. Um, Zephira and Merrick would bicker a lot and upset Bidio so she would cry and because she didn't like everyone getting all, and getting all fighting and all that stuff. And so her tears would, you know, spring forth the rivers and the oceans on the planet. And then from the mud that now developed, Zephyra created these little dolls for Bidio to play with to keep her happy. And Bidio, through playing with them, breathed life into these little dolls and created the first humans. And Bidio loved her little human dolls and she would, you know, nurture them and play with them. Those were her big toys. And Merrick would get jealous, so he figured that he was just going to go climb you know, the big tree and go find his own little spot because, you know, his sisters wouldn't, would make fun of him and he was getting bored and felt out of place. So he climbs the big tree and discovers this plane of light and energy above the tree that he can sort of claim as his own. And he calls it Astra and it's basically the realm of, of the heavens and of light and of purity and energy and that kind of stuff. So he makes his realm there. And decides that he wants to try making his own toys and action figures, as he calls them. And first attempt, he tries, you know, using what he has to make a toy, and it fails miserably. And he creates this dark, mysterious sort of evil being of 
of dark energy and malice called the Goth that splits itself into a bunch of different pieces and scatters itself everywhere. It sort of s creates this uh, this element of of evil in the world, of, of shadow, of darkness, because of what's you know light without dark. And his next try, he does a, he is a little bit more successful. He creates what he calls archons from light of astra and his own blood now these creatures don't have souls necessarily they don't have any real free will but they are loyal to death and immortal uh in any other cause and become sort of his personal army his personal uh his personal army and they're called he calls them archons but on Earth, they are known more as angels and stuff like that. And there are a bunch of little stories. Why can't I take this out? There we go. And there are a bunch of ex assorted stories that help explain sort of the natural world as we know it, by you, that we made up using our, our gods and stuff like the origin of the sun and the moon. Apparently, uh... Zephira was bickering with Merrick, and Merrick harnessing light creates fire, builds a fireball, and chucks that Zephira, who's flying around in the air because she can, and she, you know, stops it midair so it doesn't hit her. And then Bidio, who now is getting frustrated that her her siblings are fighting again, big, creates a big old ball of earth and chucks it back at us, and Zephira stops that one from hitting her. And they kind of just stick up there in the sky and float around the earth for eternity. And there's your sun and moon. And fun little stories like that. And we, you know, would incorporate our friends at the time into sort of these godly roles where one person would be the, the son of a god, son of gods, or be the, the lover of a god. And we would sort of pick our friends that best fit some of these roles that we'd invent. And there's a lot of fun little stories that developed and we basically became our own little uh what was I going? Let's go to the cave, that's where it was. We developed our own little pantheon of sort of this fam familial storyline of these gods. And we would pick, you know, historical events that would be influenced by us. Um, like Joan of Arc is sort of the female manifestation of Merrick, the who would eventually become a god of war. And th that happened because he uh he pissed off his siblings, and so when he died and was reincarnated re reincarnated as a human for a lifetime, they reincarnated him as a woman. But just to piss him off, he uh, you know would lead the French military, the French military during the time where it needed him most. And and so we would have fun stories where you know certain events were dictated by uh, sort of us as our gods, and we just had a lot of fun making these stories. And we never really just, we never really wrote anything for it necessarily. I forgot to get torches. We never, never really wrote anything for it necessarily. But we always had it in the back of our mind, thinking up of new ideas and stories. And so that's the story of our pantheon. I think we named it the Arbonata, I believe. Yes, the Arbonata was the name of our pantheon that we named it. And that is the origin of my name, Merrick, and it's been part of, you know, sort of my creative identity since high school, and uh, you can see it now. I've used it in the name of my channel, I used it in the name of this Let's Play. It's pretty pervasive in my life, and I couldn't be happier. It's one of my favorite stories to tell, and I think that's why I decided to tell it today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take these back home, build some torches, and we're going to wrap up this video for today. I will uh, hopefully make more for you next week, and if I can afford to make time to make more, uh, maybe we could try shooting for more than once a week. Uh, let me know in the comments section below if you want to see more. If you'd like to uh, enjoy more of this one, more than just once a week or anything like that. And uh, any other comments or concerns that you have, if, I, if my mic sounds off or I'm just boring as hell, just let me know and I'll try to be better about it. It's really a growing process. I'm just having a ton of fun playing this and making these videos for you guys so you can sort of kind of enjoy this journey with me of as I explore YouTube. 
and let me just go ahead and dump stuff off and i'll let you guys go you guys have been great and i'll look forward to seeing you guys next time